Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new kind of video. Uh, welcome to the first part of a beginner's tour and guide through World of Warcraft. This uh, little video series is meant for new players of War into World of Warcraft, people who don't have any heirloom gear and want to make their first character. So, let's get started. Okay, first you go to create new character. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is pick your faction, alliance or horde. Um, if this is your first character, it pretty much doesn't matter what you pick. You basically just pick your poison. I mean, the uh, horde are a bunch of basically uh, heavy metal tropes who uh, basically look ugly as shit. And uh, then you've got the alliance who look goofy as shit. So pretty much it's just pick your poison. Now, step two is you're going to want to pick uh, the gender of your character, male or female. Uh, if you're one of those horny teenager types, you're probably gonna pick female in which case you're most likely to pick a alliance character because your options are let's just say better than when you go with the horde <laughs> now if you're playing a horde character you're most likely gonna want to pick male because well as you can see here they do look pretty badass unless you're picking a blood elf in which case you just want to go with a female now you're after once you've got your race and gender picked you want to pick classes there are so many things to choose with and classes fall into basically four different categories there's range dps which is means damage per second and they inflict damage from a distance you've got melee which basically just runs up and beats the crap out of things you've got healers and you have tanks now melee dps is the basics which a lot of beginners will usually pick like the warrior Simple to use, and basically uh, heavy damage, or and they can absorb a lot of damage. Now, range DPS. There's two different kinds. There are the uh, typical spellcasters. These guys are what you would call glass cannons. They're weak in terms of defensive capability. So basically, you tickle them the wrong way and they die. But there's one other DPS that is range and that is the hunter hunter is basically a good beginner class just like the warrior is because their abilities hit hard they're pretty quick and most of the work is done for you by the little friend you see right here another type which you probably won't pick is a tank tanks are actually subclasses of some of these classes warriors have tanks paladins have tanks monks have tanks Druids have tanks, but I can't pick one right here on this. Now, if you're going to pick a tank, then be prepared to be hated. Because everyone is going to blame you for everything that goes wrong. Every idiot that stands in fire, every healer that goes AFK, every DPS that is basically, you know, looking around at butterflies or something like that. They're all going to blame you when everybody dies. But that's organized play, and we'll get to that, uh, basically, that clusterfuck later. If everybody's blaming the tanks for things that go wrong, so who do the tanks blame? Well, that's easy. Healers. Healers are usually blamed f by tanks for everything that goes wrong. While everybody else is blaming the tank, the tank is blaming the healer. Once you've decided what you want to do... You're going to go to customize. I recommend starting off with a DPS like a warrior or a hunter. You just want to check character. Change his appearance. Change his face. Skin color. See how ugly you can make him. You know. And then you want to name him something. Like, uh, you might want to pick something uh, stirring and memorable. And then you just go to finish. Okay, now that you've made your character, here we are in the game itself. This is where you'll be starting off. This is referred to as a starting zone. Now, players in World of Warcraft come into the world fully grown. It is a magical and beautiful process. And as just like people, just like babies in the real world, they come into this world pretty much dumb and no idea what they can do. That's what this place is all about. 
here we have the wet nurses who will take care of you using quests and friendly advice. Now let's explore where you're going to be starting off here. As you can see here, you have a great deal of help to fight the monsters in the area, and the monsters aren't even technically hostile. See that yellow glow? It means they won't do anything until you, unless you attack them. Like that. Now, you're basically just going to be wandering around here doing menial chores for these guys here, as they teach you how to play the game and how to be whatever it is you want to be. This isn't the only starting zone, there's usually one for every race. Now, once you've spent some time here in the starting zone, and you've done some leveling up, you're going to finally know how to walk, just like a baby. And that's what you're going to be doing for a long, long time. You're going to be walking, because that's the only way you can get anywhere. You see those cool horses these guys are riding? You don't have one yet, and you won't get one until you're level 20. By the time you're ready to leave here, you'll be about level 10. Once you've left your starting zone of taking your first steps into the world, you will most likely come across a village nearby. This is a quest hub. This is where you're going to be doing more menial chores, though they will be somewhat more difficult, and the enemies you encounter will attack you on sight. You'll be doing this for a few more levels, all the way up to level 15. But don't think that's the only thing there is to do in this game. No, there's actually much more content than just that. As you start to move from this quest hub, once you've completed all the quests, you're going to be directed to another one, and another one, and another one. Eventually, you're going to be pointed to something called a dungeon. Now, you may have encountered a couple of friends who are helping you level up, and you may be tempted to go into this dungeon to see what you can you can find. I mean, you're probably pretty strong at this point. You've pretty much kicked the crap out of anything you've encountered. So, why not, right? Well, that would not be a good idea. So you're asking yourself, why can't I go into a dungeon? Well, you see, dungeons are the first challenge you will ever encounter. They require planning and a group of, a diverse group of people, all with dedicated roles and assignments so, that being said, simply go down here to your group finder, go to dungeon finder, and find a random dungeon. Now, dungeons and quest hubs aren't the only thing you're going to find in this game. You also find amazing capital cities, where you can find a lot of the amenities that you will need to become a good player. One thing is this thing right here, the, uh, the bank. This is where you hold all your items so that people don't steal them from you, or you don't fill up your space in your bags. You can only carry so much. Over here, we have the auction house. The auction house is where people go to sell items to other players and basically rip them off. You won't be using this for quite some time, unless that's the reason you started this game, in which case, go nuts. As there really isn't a whole hell of a lot to do in the first few levels of the game, you're basically just going to be power leveling through dungeons and quests and uh, visiting various capital cities so that you can find the routes to and from them because those will become more important later on. Now you might be concerned because you constantly have to walk and run everywhere or just take the bus, but you don't have to worry about that. Once you reach level 20, if you've got the gold, which you probably won't, you can buy a mount. You have to go to your mount trainer to have them teach you how to ride it, and then you've got to go to the mount vendor to buy a mount. You're going to start off with basic mounts, like this. This is a typical ground mount. It'll increase your walking speed by about 60%, so you can get around a lot faster. Once you reach level 40, you'll be able to turn these mounts into what they call a swift mount, so you can move at 100% increase speed. So you're basically moving around twice as fast as you normally do. You're going to use these to get around a lot. Now pretty soon you're going to get pretty damn sick of all the constant grinding for levels and stuff because there doesn't seem to be anything going on here. Well congratulations you have discovered the secret of what is remaining of Villain oh Wow. This game used to have a lot of content for the low level players all the way up to level 60 but all that has been removed. 
Blizzard just doesn't seem to like the old game. Now, once you get to about level 48 to 50, you get a little trick that you can do. We're going to go into this here dungeon, and I'm going to show you what this trick is. Now, this dungeon here is called the Black Rot Depths, and you're going to see it in your dungeon finder as a specific dungeon under Black Rock Depths Detention Area. Now this little gem is an incredible little bug that Blizzard still hasn't fixed, which we're all very help thank grateful for. If you use this bug pretty soon, you will be a towering beast. Now, first thing you want to do is queue up for the dungeon and enter it. Now, instead of going through the dungeon normally, you're going to want to go over to that thing right there. Your group clicks on it, and you go to just past the Grim Guzzler. This is the first step of our little bug. Go over here, and you jump down. Kill these two idiots. Your party should be able to handle this, and most likely that people will know what the hell is going on. So they, you basically just have to follow everybody's lead. Now the first thing you want to do is go kill that boss right there, that fiery thing. Then you turn around and go this way, and you're going to want to kill a boss that is down that way. Once you've done this, you get a rather large bit of experience. And when I say large, I don't mean like just significant. I mean, it is freaking huge! You basically are just going to keep grinding this dungeon again and again and again until the game doesn't let you enter this dungeon anymore. By that point, you should be off to the next part of our little tour, which will be level 60 through 70 in the Burning Crusade. However, we won't be doing that today. Tomorrow, we'll be going to... Maybe not tomorrow, but... We will soon be covering the Burning Crusade section, but this is just for levels 1 through 60. As there's not a lot of content... There isn't really much for us to do. So I will see you guys next time for the tour through the Burning Crusade. And keep tuning in every day. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you guys think about these videos. And uh, let me know if you're one of if thinking about getting into WoW. If this might uh, seem a little bit interesting to you. But keep following my tour guide through the World of Warcraft. And one day, you too could have a badass warrior just like this.